Hello everybody, Chris or Koryakin here. Last video I talked about the basics of chords and this video I'm going to get into more of the interesting things you can do with them to get beyond the simple, uh, what you call functional harmony, where you have tonic, dominant, subdominant, or predominant, which are hiding down here. Uh, in order to make my point a bit more clear, I took the time to write a little simple melody with some basic block chords. Now we're in the key of G because I like it, makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, so here's a melody I came up with, uh, without the chords. Pretty straightforward, nothing crazy going on here. Let's hear it sounds with chords. So nothing incredible going on here. Uh, I've got one G, one G again, C or four, back to one. So one one four one. Uh, didn't use any five there, dominant. Uh, that's fine, whatever. Uh, here we have A minor. This is the two minor. Two is predominant, but in this case, it's going to minor 6 as a sort of, uh, how would I describe it, um, a, a quick uh, interluder or stop before it goes down finally to 5. So it's on the way, predominant, do tonic, dominant, tonic. Hear it sounds with chords? Tonic. And I would describe that as fine, but not really all that interesting. So if I was going to make it more interesting, I'd start thinking about the bass line. We got the same chord in a row. Um, one easy way we can make it a bit more interesting is there's that C here. What if we just get rid of this low note? And now it's a G chord, but with B in the bass. Uh, there's not, it's not a whole lot of difference. Um, I would actually, in order to make it a bit more different, take the B out here. So now we've got a more like open spacing as opposed to each single note from the chord being here. Our B that was down here is now up here as part of the melody. And suddenly it sounds a little bit more interesting. We could try taking that out because it's up there too. I don't know, let's see how it sounds. Yeah, it's fine. Um, I could put it back could take it out. Honestly, I could take it or leave it. I'd have to think more before I have a real strong feeling on that. Um, I do think that having like having less of the block chord sounds makes the melody stand out a bit more. Um, yeah, let's try that. So here we've got A minor going down to E. What if we take this E and put it down here? I actually don't know how it's going to sound. Yeah, I kind of like that. Um, I like that E down here. I would actually really like this E, F sharp, G, this sort of little tiny bass melody leading up to there. So let's take that D and put it, oh, there's already one up here. Let's just get rid of it then and see what we get. Try to this one. So I'm trying to cut down to th only three notes and seeing how it sounds. Yeah, I like that overall. So it's not quite as dense. There isn't this huge wall of sound you get from like full block triads every single strong beat or every single bar, I guess. Um, so that's one thing you can think about. Think about your bass line motion. And especially, see how this is this melody is going down like this, and this bass line is going up like that. That sort of contrary motion, motion in different directions, down here, up this way, down here, or up this way here, and down up here. That contrary contrary motion can be very effective. 
All right, but that isn't the main thing I wanted to talk about. The main thing I wanted to talk about is chord substitutions. So what you can do is you aren't limited to just these. My favorite thing in the world to do is to go to a chord that makes sense because of a melody note, but doesn't make sense in the chord function. So let me oh, just fix this. I'm getting, having some trouble with my headphones. So let's take this chord here. No, sorry, this one over here. So here we've got a nice G chord. It's very straightforward. But this note is really the only one that we absolutely have to have because that's our melody note. What if we use another chord that has the D there? So the first one that comes to mind is, actually, I'll just write it out down here. So if D is the bass, we've got D, F sharp, and A. If D is in the middle, we've got B flat, D and F. And if D is in the top, we've got G, B, and D. So that chord is in our key, it's five. That chord is in our key, it's one. This is the chord that doesn't stand out, or that, that's kind of the odd one out. Let's try sticking that one in here and see what happens. So what if we do B flat, F, and D, and then this one, uh, we'll put it there. Just so that we have, we are, I mean, we we'll have triad motion going on like this way, which isn't great, but let's see how it sounds. Ooh, okay. And in fact, this would be even better if this B flat, if we had this motion upwards, and put the B flat up here. Let's hear how it sounds. Oh. So that's interesting. So it gives a sense of, we're going to a place that's sort of like weird. It gives a sense of, I don't know exactly where we're going or why. And then you can use that to modulate to somewhere else if you want to. So if I was going to play this, let's see if I can do this. Oh, sorry. So that time I used the B flat to sort of lead into a G minor one. So I started in G major, ended up in G minor. Let's see if I can do something else. I feel like I'm gonna end up in A flat here. So let's try this again. Sorry, let me try this one more time. No, that's not right. Nope. Maybe I end up in E flat? So this would be to B flat here. So this B natural would have something have to go down to there. So I'd want to keep the melody mostly the same. But that was terrible. Uh, e flat. Yeah, let's try this turn. I was going to go to a G for either. Uh, I feel like I should probably really try and cement this by making sure I have the, the root, the, the chord in the very bottom and not put it up here. It might be a little loud, but let's see how it goes.
and then this was going to be our B flat because now that suddenly this is our five of E flat, which is where we're trying to end up. And then this is going to be our dominant seventh. Don't worry. I kind of like that. So this D flat shouldn't exist. So here we actually have a choice of going to where we think we're supposed to go. And let's hear how it sounds. So this is with the sudden modulation based off this common tone, this destination, this D here. actually liked the the sudden modulation back to G here. Uh, specifically because all of a sudden it really wants to lead to C minor. So this is not this is actually not going to E flat. The cadence, which is supposed to arrive here, now gets extended a little bit longer. And then and then we could do C minor here. And just for fun, we'll put a really big C down here. Or for extra fun, if we don't want that, we could make this a suspended chord, and then our destination is not clear. It's, and now we don't know if we're ending in something major or minor because it doesn't have the third. Uh, let's put make it actually an F there. So we'll do that suspended one. So instead of the E flat, we've got the F. I tried it with the D here. I don't think it really worked. We got this sort of sense of maybe it no, doesn't matter. Oh, and if I wanted to go into a new section, I could do this. Or make it even shorter like this. And obviously this would be clan lower things, so the maximum length would be eight, but we won't think about that right now. And then if we wanted to turn it into a whole new section, I could repeat this, but now with the lower note here instead. So this is still the same destination, but we're going here. something to think about. But anyway, if you go back to where we started, it was a very straightforward little uh, ditty, a kind of uninspiring, very cliche tune in G. But now all of a sudden we have G, G again, and it looks like we're going to, here's our four, it's our C, and our C actually leads to B flat, but with the D in the bottom. We could actually put, put the B flat in the bottom and see how that sounds. Try and get this motion going by taking out that. And now all of a sudden we've got this leading into another section, just based off of what we were doing here. Anyway, this is my favorite trick to use, using a melody and or having a common tone having a note that's repeated or a destination tone that goes somewhere you don't think it is. So if I did this, it would be the second time through. First time through would be the original one that ends in G. Second time through, or I don't know, maybe even third or fourth time through, we would have this change to somewhere else. You see this all the time in the music I write. Um, 
Let me actually see if I can dig up an example for you. Let's open. Sure. So this is the piece I was working on for Aspasia's concert, or for contest, I should say. This is the one. Uh, so uh, let's just focus on the harp part for now. Uh, let's start right here. So uh, let's get... Hello? There we go. No, that one. Okay. So, here we are. Here we are. We're in A minor now. Pretty straightforward uh, once you get around all the fanciness. A minor, just A C E. Uh, I wouldn't actually call this a, an F chord or even like some sort of fancy B diminished chord. This is just a decoration of the E. This is still all A minor. If you really want to think about it, maybe it's E, maybe it's five, but it's just a decoration of it. Same thing over here, this time. The F does resolve down to where it's supposed to in the E, so this is very much obviously an E chord over here. Or you could say it's all just one really big A minor chord. Over here, we've got minor four. Uh, we got our D minor, I guess technically it's a, the C's here, so you could call it D minor seven if you want to. But again, it's just one, minor one, minor four, and then a very decorated five. This is on my E here. Five goes to major six, another tonic. So this is dominant going to tonic. And then this is E again. So we're just back to five again. And then here we finally get that G sharp that tells us, yes, this is actually really a five chord. And then here we have the same line, which is supposed to lead us back to A minor, but instead we go to F. So this whole section is landing in another key. That is, the chord is still originally in A minor. It's just the whole thing is in a different key. And you can tell because we got this B flat now. So. Common tone modulation, we know we're going to land on an A, or actually I should say the A is in the flute part. The A's here, the A gets repeated, and then the A suddenly is no longer the tonic, no longer one, the first scale degree of A minor, now it's the third of F. Anyway, let's move on a little bit and just see how it's on. I'm going to skip ahead and see if I can find the part a little bit later where I do the change. Uh, yeah, no, it's actually like way, way past here. Um, is this it? Okay, so here it is. So if you remember, previously, when we got here, 183, I remember that. When we got here previously, it landed on F major. But now we're landing on, it's still F, but now it's F sharp. So this is now an F sharp diminished chord which is going to change the entire context of what's happening. I believe the melody is almost the same. No, it goes up a little bit for dramatic effect here. But so
So this is So it's actually going back to the same place here. It's just this little part here for dramatic effect is going, yeah, we're supposed to go to F. No, nope. we go to F sharp diminished to change things around entirely. Uh, this is the sort of thing I absolutely love. And again, later on in the same piece where exactly the same thing happens, I believe. Yep, so 193. So previously, it went back to the... So it'll go back to the F major part here. So this is exactly the same thing that happens earlier in the piece. But in this later time when it comes back, it is very different. Oh. Oh, sorry, let's go back to here. So before we ended up in F major, here we're suddenly in F sharp, E flat, C, we're in C diminished, A minor. So it's uh, an F sharp diminished chord. So we started in F, went to F sharp diminished for the sense of we're going to the same place, but everything is different because the chord we're landing on has changed. Um, I could go through all my pieces and give you countless examples, but this is just one pretty good example of what I'm doing. You can listen to all the other ones. I'm happy to explain more, but the idea is just common tone modulation. This A natural, in this case, was supposed to be originally from the A minor, became part of the F, now it became part of the F sharp diminished chord. So the melody is the exact same, although we change it here a little bit so it stays in the new key, but it uses the new scale. But it gives a sense of continuity, even though things are changing. I love this feeling of things are staying the same, the melody is the same, but everything around it changes, the context changes so it sounds different. Um, if you can get your head around that, that's probably one of the things you can do that's that can really help you write more interesting harmonic progressions. Uh, it'll allow you to unlock modulating to weird keys. I mean, you can start in A. Let's see if I can get my keyboard out. So you can start in A here. And just keeping that A going. You can go to A, F. You can go to D minor. Or D major. Or you can go to F sharp minor. You can use that now as a seventh of a B chord. Uh, let's try going to F. Uh, let's try going to, we'll use that uh, D. And suddenly we got to G. Um, are there any other really interesting things we can do with this one? We can, oh, we can do the diminished thing. So here's A minor. We're using it as part of a diminished chord. And we suddenly ended up in D flat. Uh, going from A minor to D flat in one chord. Well, I guess two, but still. Um, it's lots of fun. You can do lots of awesome things with this. And if you have any questions, give me a shout. Otherwise, have fun. Play around with it. Um, just remember, if like pick destination tones that are really, really strong, it helps to emphasize them rhythmically. Or if you're going to use syncopation, make it painfully obvious what's the chord tone and what's not. And then just experiment and see where you can go. And then the biggest uh, question becomes, if you're going to do this sort of crazy going to weird places, choose when. Uh, if you overdo it, it sounds kind of wonky, but uh, used judiciously, you can do some really awesome stuff. All right, have a good one.